evening. It is Christmas Eve in New York, and the talk of the town is not peace on earth, but the violence among us, this time in the subways, where a vigilante and his gun brought terror this past weekend. The victims were four teenagers. I think he did right by shooting these guys. Sure, they tried to mug him. I think he was, you know, protecting himself. This is around the Christmas holiday. You gotta look out for yourself. I think he was justified, and, and you know, and after all, he was just four against one. Well, I think he did right. I really do. Because uh, somebody's gotta do something, and the police aren't always there. December 22nd, 1984, four black men, ages 18 to 19, approach a white man on the two train attempting to mug him. Armed with sharpened screwdrivers, they think they found an easy mark. They start by demanding $5 from this person as the other people crowd around. Unfortunately for them, the man that they were attempting to mug on this two train on that fateful day was Bernard Getz, who was armed and he shot all four of them. Today, we are going to once again turn back the clock in history and look at a historic crime that unlike many of the other crimes that I've talked about recently on this YouTube channel, weren't actually deemed as racist at the time. In fact, the person who defended himself in this situation from these muggers was lauded as a hero by the general public, and even one of the attacker's mothers apologized to him because she knew her son was attempting to mug him. I would say to him that I'm sorry about the state of our society. However, and I do mean how and then ever, that didn't mean that at the time there weren't certain race grifters, certain race hustlers trying to make something that wasn't there out of this case. And case in point, we've talked about it in the past, overweight Al Sharpton stepped up to the plate to make this about race. And what's great about this video of Al Sharpton that I'm about to show you is the reaction from a woman in the crowd after the fact. Five criminally minded people met on the subway that day. When he put the gun in his pocket, he became the people he was fighting. He broke the law. People are tired. Working people are tired of riding the subways and being assaulted. It is important to note that when somebody is lauded by the mainstream media as some kind of leader in the black community, even though they've been caught multiple different times perpetuating race hoaxes, that this is not a consensus in full among the black communities around the country. Because even in this instance, in New York, while Al Sharpton started off where he's supposed to have his biggest base of support, the people were not on his side. And I'm not talking about your everyday people. I'm talking specifically about black people. They knew what was going on. They knew that these four people who had criminal records, those criminal records involved assaulting and robbing people, were up to no good and they were in support of the guy who defended himself. Now the four black criminals in this case, Barry Allen, not to be confused with this Barry Allen who's actually the Flash, Troy Canty, James Rasmir, and Darrell KB, all were fortunate enough to survive this shooting, although one of these people, KB, was actually paralyzed by a bullet fired by Groats into his back. Now we're going to talk about that one specifically a little later on in this video, but I want to give you an idea of the atmosphere of New York City at the time, because New York City back then was nowhere near what New York City is to this day. We were on a streak of unending Democratic mayors who were soft on crime and our homicide rate and our violent crime rates suffered because of it. Now, retroactively, people like to look back and racialize this incident. They like to pretend that this was considered an evil white racist attacking black men who honestly probably didn't do anything, even though one of them admitted they went on the train specifically to rob this guy, and it was obvious they were armed with screwdrivers. They all approached him demanding money, but that's neither here nor there at this moment because we're talking about at the time. Now, before I go any further into this story, I wanna take a moment right here to address you guys out in the audience. In case you haven't noticed, Devin Tracy, deleted off of YouTube. Colin Flaherty, also deleted off of YouTube. I'm essentially the only one with a major megaphone that was comparable in size on this platform to those two people still doing this type of content, still calling out crime, still debunking the myths and misinformation on this subject on the platform. And if I could brag a little bit, I think I'd do it better than anybody else, definitely that remains, and maybe past, present, and future. Devin, don't at me. So if you want to support my content, then I have Patreon links. I have Subscribestar links. I have PayPal. I have Venmo. They're all in the description. Now is your opportunity to do so. I almost never plug this in the middle of my video, but if you want to support the channel, some of you have been asking how, that's how you would do it. Also, I have t-shirts. They're 
in the merch shelf below this video. Check it out. Now let's get back to this case. At the time, the New York City subways looked like this. Homicide was going through the roof along with multiple other violent crimes. And New Yorkers just had enough. And this is evidenced by people going out in public and saying that they are in support of this person. Now there were caveats here and there, but the general attitude among the American people and among the people of New York City, more importantly, was that you have a right to defend yourself. And Groats actually endeared himself to these people when nine days later he churned himself in in order to face justice. Somebody who was guilty or depicted as a vigilante, luring people into a trap so that he can shoot them, likely would not have done such a thing and the people of New York agreed with that and they were largely behind him. The of Bernard Getz did not end the debate among citizens. Well, I don't think he should be put in jail for protecting himself. You people have put upon him the label of vigilante. I put the label as just a guy with a, a scared guy, a scared citizen. Getz's surrender brought a wave of sympathy even from the mother of one of the victims. Now, this case has permeated throughout pop culture, and I want to take a break for a moment to mention one or two of these pop culture points where this case is significantly referenced. One of which is the totally not woke, totally anti-SJW, totally snubbed film, The Joker, which depicts a very similar instance where the Joker shoots and kills a bunch of white men who work on Wall Street, who attack him in the subway. Now, this, according to the director, was a reference to the subway vigilante, which was the flashpoint in that film. However, the problem in 1984, just like the problem of crime in our subways today, was not wealthy Wall Street types assaulting people at random on the train. So the Totally Not Woke film, of course, race swapped the criminals in order to make a class issue out of what is retroactively looked at as a race issue, but back in the day was determined to be a crime issue but that's not even the most interesting reference to this specific case that happens to connect to the batman universe i was remembering after i watched one of these interviews specifically the one of this guy the film which is animated the dark knight returns now the dark knight returns is based on one of the most successful batman comic books in history and a lot of this is just a straight up adaptation and this guy in particular is actually a reference to the guy that was interviewed in support of the black criminals at the time. I think what he did was completely wrong. I mean, I think I'm, I'm a law student. So that's the real guy who is completely soft on these criminals. And here is the Dark Knight Returns version of this character that I believe was based on him. It makes me sick to see such a violation of people's rights. We have to strive to reintegrate the disenfranchised into society, not revel in their punishment. We have to show patience. Excuse me? No, I'd never live in the city. That's absolutely hilarious. Have you ever lived in the city? No, of course not. I would never live in the city, but he has all these opinions about how vigilantes are pretty bad and evil. And if you don't think the timeline lines up because this movie came out in 2013, remember the comic book in which this movie was an adaptation of came out in 1986. This was one of the most famous cases at the tail end of 1984 the case happened december 22nd of 1984 frank miller was heavily inspired and gotham has always been heavily inspired by new york city this guy is in fact this guy and this is what somebody who actually is tough on crime thinks of this kind of attitude against vigilantes when crime is so obviously and clearly a major problem. Now, it is important to note, despite the fact that this was not a racial issue at the time, and despite the fact that Bernard had widespread public support, especially after he turned himself in, that he did not help his actual case when being brought up to the public. And the prosecution and the political class took advantage of the fact that he decided to sit with the police and do an interview, and he was raw and emotional in that interview talking about how he felt. If you take a rat and you corner it, and you, let's say just one time, you start poking it with, with red hot needles, and the, reactor, and the rat doesn't know how to react, and you do this, okay? And you wind up doing it again, or you know, perhaps again, and if once in a while, a rat turns viciously on you, and just becomes a total vicious killer, which is which is really what I was. Look, if I had more bullets, I would have shot them all again and again. The old, my problem was I ran out of bullets, and I was gonna I was gonna gouge one of the guy's eyes out with my keys afterwards. You you you, you, you can't understand this. I know you can't understand this. That's fine. The reason the only reason I didn't do it is because 
he had changed his life. You see, Bernard was actually mugged a few years prior to this. And when he was mugged, then by two individuals, he fought back and was able to capture one of those individuals and hold them for the police. And what really ticked Bernard off at the time is that while he was filling out the report, the guy had already been released and he got a slap on the wrist. He was only charged with damaging Bernard's clothing in the assault and attempted robbery that went wrong for him. So Bernard actually spent more time in the police station filing the police report on this person than this guy spent in jail for committing the crime against him. And of course, they never caught his partner. Now, I'm sure they caught him eventually committing another crime. These are career criminals that this guy was dealing with. So at this point, this is when Bernard decided to start carrying a gun. Now, of course, he was denied a gun permit in the city of New York, so he was carrying that gun illegally. But according to himself, he started carrying that gun the day after that. Like, that's when he made the decision to go and buy it. And for three years, he was carrying a gun so he wouldn't be victimized again. A sentiment that was largely embraced by the people of New York City. So when it came to it, and these four people approached him, and they were intending to rob him, despite what the apologists say, one of them admitted to it again, this guy defended himself from those robbers. And in fact, when they tried to secure an indictment against this person because this was a huge political prosecution for the mayor and the district attorney, the grand jury actually refused to indict on any of the serious charges only deciding to indict on the illegal weapons charge, which if we're being honest, this is what Bernard was actually guilty of. So they actually had to try again to get another indictment for homicide charges because yes, they were trying to charge this guy with attempted murder for defending himself because he made the city look bad and the people were too much in support of this person. Philanthropism will not be tolerated in this city. You're not gonna have instant justice meted out by anybody because that's not just. It went to trial. Bernard did not testify in his trial because his lawyers felt like he was too aggressive or prone to anger in his police interview. Mr. Gibbs, why these four? Why these four? Oh, oh, isn't that beautiful? You asked the question in an intellectual way. Why these four? Why these four? I didn't pick out these four. I never met those guys. I told you, you have it in here. I never met them. Why these four, though? I mean, because, what? because I saw what they were intending to do with me, miss. Miss, they were intending to play with me. Like a cat plays with a mouse. And he felt like the people had heard enough from him. And Bernard was found not guilty on all counts except for the possession of an illegal handgun. He spent 250 days in jail. And despite what his lawyers thought he would do once he got out, he was a local celebrity. He even ran for office for certain public advocate positions, or I think the position was literally called the public advocate, and he didn't win, but he was largely embraced by New York City, despite the fact that people try now to retroactively paint him as a racist. Now, on the question of race, obviously there were race hustlers at the time. Al Sharpton, I showed you clips of him, was present in the public. He was trying to make the case that this was a racial issue, and people retroactively have tried to add in or inject more racial animus than was actually there. Now, Bernard did not help that. There are reports that he used the N-word at some point. I haven't found anything to verify these reports, but let's just say that he did. This is a guy who was victimized by criminals, black criminals, the first time. He saw the system do nothing, even though he captured one of those criminals. And then later on, he was set upon by four black adults who attempted to rob him. They had sharpened screwdrivers. They were likely going to physically assault him, and he ended up firing his gun at these people. If at some point after the fact, somebody reported that he used the N-word out of anger or something like that, or even racial animosity, to me, it doesn't change the facts of the case. Also, this is what we would call a learned prejudice. It's something that people need to work past and get over, but we can see the impacts of this learned prejudice in our society today. You have a bad experience with one person of a racial group, and unfortunately, that causes you to have negative perceptions of that group as a whole. It's not a good thing. I don't embrace it. If this were the case, I think it would be upon Bernard and upon anybody else feeling this way to move past that and understand that individual horrible instances never represent an entire group as a whole. I can't believe I'm saying this. But again, it wouldn't change the facts of the case. The only issue with this case that I have and with Bernard's actions 
is the last shot that he dealt to the guy that he paralyzed because by Bernard's own admission in his police interview, this shot was in fact excessive. I was sure I shot. It was funny. I wanted to give Anthony the honest answer a while if I missed. But I, I went I went to him the second time. And I looked at him. And he can't verify this because he was probably out of it by then. If I had shot him or if he wasn't, I don't know. And I said you seem to be doing all right. Here's another. Now, this guy was paralyzed by this shot. And in fact, he actually got brain damage from being deprived of oxygen from the blood loss in this case. He ended up suing Bernard later for $43 million for damages, but he died before any of those damages. Not one dime was paid to him. Now, obviously, this guy was acting criminally. Obviously, he was attempting to rob this person. Obviously, they were armed. And this guy was the initiator, it appears, of the robbery. However, However, once these people have surrendered, once they are down, you cannot initiate force against them. That's when the self-defense scenario ends, and this is where Bernard took it too far. I would have charged, and had I been on the jury, I might have convicted him of aggravated battery in this instance because this shot was, in fact, excessive. You can make the case that this was like an emotional time. He went crazy by the high. He just had to shoot at four people that were attempting to rob him, but this seemed like a more cold and calculated moment. It may not rise all the way to attempted murder, but at least an aggravated battery when you talk to somebody and you shoot at him because they don't appear to be hurt according to your own words. This is the one instance that separates Bernard from somebody like Kyle Rittenhouse, who clearly and obviously on video unambiguously defended himself from attackers who he was fully within his legal right to defend him himself from. This is a huge distinction, and for this portion, I actually think Bernard got off way too easy, and in my justice system, this would not happen. We don't play patty cakes with criminals, even if it's a heat of the moment type of situation. So this is the one part where I think the sympathies of the people of New York went a little bit too far. But again, you have to understand the context of people in the city that were just sick of the criminal element of New York City always getting away with it and crime rates going up and the heightened murder rate and all the terrible stories that you saw. Bernard became a symbol of that, and unfortunately, in my mind, that symbolic nature of him defending himself, which 99% of this case was him defending himself, obscured people's perception of that final step where I think he just went too far and he should have faced some criminal consequences for it. And that's beyond the illegal possession of a gun. Now, that is my analysis of the legendary subway vigilante that has inspired many different references in pop culture. And what's great about my analysis is that it's perfect. It's elegant. It's beautiful in every way. And in order to contradict it, the media has to drag out total buffoons who were children at the time of the incident to talk about the racial implications of the shooting. Look at this guy that Inside Edition dragged out to make the case that this was a racial thing. Jumani Williams was just eight years old when Get shot the four men. It's hard to take race out of instances like this. So yeah, I'm gonna pause it right here so you can notice these two buttons. One is this fist, and the other one is this one that says stay woke. But again, listen to his apologetics and how absurd he is. Folks try to do it, but the question is if it was, was four young white men, would it have the same result given even the same circumstances? And it's hard to think that it would have, uh, particularly with the venom afterwards. And so even if there was a fear, even if you thought you were gonna be mugged, when you see black skin, the response is so much more violent. Again, a guy who was eight years old at the time. Now, granted, I wasn't alive at the time, but I have a better finger on the pulse of New York City than this clown is saying that because it involved black skin, the reaction is way more violent and way more brutal. When you see black skin, the response is so much more violent. No, these four black men armed with heavy duty sharpened screwdrivers that approach this guy in a group were not on their way to church to hand out Bibles for the community. But the father of one of the victims says his son didn't ask for money at all. One is really asked this man for the time. The time of day. The time of day. And the man started shooting. The next thing he knew, he was in the hospital. He don't know nothing else. He tells me he got shot for nothing. Police say the boys were armed with sharpened screwdrivers. Oh, One brother wearing a mask because he was afraid of so-called police reprisals told me his brother did carry a screwdriver for protection on the subways, but he said the request for money was a request and not a threat. 
Brother said that he asked a man for $5. They kept asking the man, and the man got scared. He was scared of them because all the two, all the three kids kept looking at him while Troy was asking. He didn't try to rob the man. He, to rob him. he wanted to play the video game because they was going to 34th to play the video game. They didn't have no money. He had to hop the train, and, and Troy didn't want to get no ticket because all he did, he got a penalty loss in the case. That's all. These guys were going to rob him. If he had resisted and he didn't have the gun, they were going to stab him. This actually happened to a family friend of mine who was stabbed multiple different times on the New York City subway during this same era. He still, even though he's 50 years old, is terrified to ride the subway to this very day and he works for the fbi now it's actually insane the impact that this level of crime and criminality had on people so no i completely and wholly reject the idea that if these four people were white then people would be on their side somehow that's just not the case we wouldn't even be talking about this story years later and i wouldn't be referencing segments about this story years later it wouldn't have penetrated our pop culture had these four people been white the only angle to paint the criminals as victims in this scenario is to somehow racialize the attacker who was in fact the guy defending himself. So total clown show by this guy. And we knew this from the jump, just evidenced by the buttons that he wears on his jacket. From all over, from Bona gets to police shootings. And also the comparison to police shootings, as we've talked about multiple different times on this channel, if you think that black people who are more likely to commit violent crime in this nation way disproportionately to their population, are being shot not because of that fact but because of some kind of racism on behalf of police then you need to check those premises you're totally wrong on that but hey those are just my thoughts let me know your thoughts down in the comments below let me know how you feel about these retro cases if you think i should do more or less let me know how you feel about this individual case i want to know it i want to hear it write it down in the comments do your thing this has been me talking about the subway vigilante till next time